Okay, uh, Bikini Bottom Genetics, questions 6 through 8 explained. We'll start with number 6. So, everyone in Squidward's family has light blue skin, which is dominant trait. So, I'm going to start my key right away. Um, so, we have light blue, which is dominant. So, we'll give it a big B in his hometown of Squid Valley. His family brags that they are purebred. So purebred, if you think back, purebred means that they only have the dominant allele to give. And so a pure bred is the same thing as a homozygous. And they only have one thing to give. He recently married a nice girl who has light green skin. So now we know our other characteristic trait. So light green. And light green is recessive, so it would have to come with the genotype little b, little b. So now I have my key. I have my cross. So oops. Um, we have Squidward, who is blue. But we don't know his genotype, so it's Big B with nothing there. Um, and he is having offspring with a light green skin individual. Um, create a Punnett square to show the possibilities that was, would result if Squidward and his new bride had children. Use B to represent the dominant gene and lowercase b to represent the recessive. And so everyone in Squidward's family has light blue skin, which is dominant, and his family breaks their purebred line. So we're going to make an assumption that he's going to have this purebred, okay? So if I put that into a Punnett square, inside the square are the offspring. So I put the allele that the parents can give. Squidward could give a big B or a big B. And the light green female could give a little b or a little b. And so in this case, every offspring they have is going to have blue. Um, going to have blue skin, and they're going to be heterozygous. And so my pen doesn't look in there for a second. Um, I could have put it in this Punnett square here. I guess I just made my own. Uh, list possible genotypes and phenotypes of their children. Well, there is only one genotype that would be big B, little b, heterozygous, and that would be light blue. What are the chances of a child with light blue skin? Well, that is 100%. All of them will be light blue because they're all heterozygous. What are the chances with light green? That will be zero. And would Squidward's children still be considered purebreds? Explain. So purebred is homozygous. If his children are heterozygous, would they be considered purebreds? No, they would not because all children are hybrid or heterozygous, big B, little b. And so Squidward's family line is no longer going to be purebred. Question number seven. Assume, one of, assume that one of Squidward's sons who is heterozygous for light blue body color. So we're still using the same key up here. I guess I'll leave it here like this. Um, assume one of his sons, so big B, little b, is going to marry a girl who is also heterozygous. So she's also blue um, skin and heterozygous. Create a Punnett square to show the possibility. So here's the cross. And I'll come over here. So one parent could give the big B or the little B. The other parent could also give the big B or the little B. And so we go ahead and we fill in. We bring the big B down, the little B over, little B down, little B over. List all the possible genotypes and phenotypes of their children. Well, now we have more. We have genotypes. We have homozygous dominant. We have heterozygous. 
And we also have homozygous recessive for our genotypes. Our phenotypes could be light blue or light green. And in this case, we have both, both options as possibilities. What are the chances of a child with light blue skin? And so light blue skin, um, I'll go ahead and we'll just highlight that in. This one's going to be light blue, light blue, and light blue. Um, that other one is going to be whoops, light green. And so going back to the pen, what are the chances of a child with light blue? Well, three of four, uh, three out of four, three over four is actually 75%. And I don't care which way you write that. You write it three-fourths or 75 percentage. Um, what are the chances of a child with light green? This one's going to be one-fourth, and one-fourth is 25%. All right, moving on to the last problem. Number eight, Mr. Krabs and his wife recently had a little crabby, but it has not been a happy occasion for them. Mrs. Krabs has been upset since she first saw her new baby who had short eyeballs. Ooh, so short eyeballs and long eyeballs. She claims that the hospital goofed and mixed up her baby with someone else's baby. Mr. Krabs is homozygous for his tall eyeballs. So, we have a key, and we have tall eyeballs, and we have short eyeballs. Fantastic. So, big T, because tall eyeball is dominant, and short eyeballs would be homozygous recessive. We know that the baby they're taking home has short eyeballs, all right? So some of the members of her family have short eyes, which is the recessive trait. Create a Punnett square using dominant T for dominant, uppercase T for dominant gene and the lowercase T for recessive gene. Okay, so Mr. Krabs is homozygous for tall eyeballs. So if we know for sure that he is homozygous for tall eyeballs, then Mr. Krabs is big T, big T, right? While his wife is heterozygous for her eyeballs. So she has tall eyeballs, but she is heterozygous. So hetero is not the same, so she has one of each. If indeed Mr. Krabs is homozygous, then we go ahead and we fill in. So Mr. Krabs only has the dominant allele to give. Mrs. Krabs could give the dominant or the recessive. And so their offspring would all have long eyeballs. Uh-oh. That's a problem. List all the possible genotypes and phenotypes. So the genotypes would be homozygous dominant or heterozygous. And the only phenotype possibility is going to be Tall eyeballs. Did the hospital make a mistake? E yes. If Mr. Krabs is big T, big T, he can not produce a baby or an offspring with short eyeballs because he will always give a big T. So all of his offspring would have a T. Now, the real question would be, how do you know Mr. Krabs is homozygous? They would have to do a whole lot more testing to make sure. All right, I hope this is helpful, you guys. Uh, maybe review, do a few more of the questions, um, and then you should be ready to potentially take the assessment.